can performance management software ever be actually damaging? Um, so who, which of you would like to, to answer this one? <laughs> Have you ever seen an example of where it goes wrong by putting in some software? Heather, why don't you start? Okay, um, and I think it links, Darren Mitchell's put a question up around what comes first, developing a process or choosing a software tool. And I think my answer is in that, is in that process. If you choose a software tool first, you might well make a mistake and choose something that doesn't do what your organization really needs it to do. And then everyone will hate it and then you will not be popular. Um, so I think it is, and I'm not, I'm assuming that any tool you buy functions and is fit for purpose for what it does. Let's put that, let's make it that kind of basic assumption. But it's really important that you have a tool that will help you deliver what you want to deliver. And buying a tool when you don't really know what you want to deliver can be a disaster. And I have seen that kind of disaster, as I've seen the disaster that we talked about at the beginning, where people are buying the tool in, in that hopes that it will somehow miraculously make everybody have great conversations, when of course it, it, it won't miraculously do that. So expecting it to fix a problem that it can't fix um, will bring a premium on your head. So I would really urge anybody listening, make sure that you understand what you're trying to achieve with your software before you choose it. Um, and then, yes, maybe certainly around a process, you might then have to slightly flex how your process works in order to work with the tool that will deliver the result you really, really want. But mostly you should think first about what I want out and then think about a tool. And the process is a kind of minor part in that is the outcome that really matters. Yeah, I quite agree. So can it ever be, have I ever seen it be damaging? I'm not sure about that, but I feel like we probably had conversations, at the, the very early conversation with customers where they've had a poor experience in the past and, and they're looking to, you know, to do something completely different. So we do, yeah, I'm aware of it. Um, but yes, I, I think that's probably why appraised and probably some of the other systems as well that, that the other companies have um, develop customer success teams who are able to talk a bit more um, strategically about the process and what they want out of it um, or bring in uh, other resources or consultancy if necessary to do that. And um, we love it when uh, an organization comes to us and says, well, we've just spent three months sitting you know, in a dark room working out what is the perfect thing for us. And now we're coming out to market to see who, who can support it. And that, that always works really well for us. Um, having said that, we often work with small companies who want to, who say, let me just don't really know. And so we will have a bit of a, um, yeah, we'll have to take a bit of a step back and we'll, we'll ask them about what is it that you're, you're really trying to achieve and why, why did you call us at all? What, you know, what is it that you're hoping for? What, what would great performance management look like in your organization? You know, how would it manifest itself? And then we'll make recommendations around it so it's very important that, that people have got a process that is is uh has been thoughtfully designed and is going to achieve those those goals and not just something off the shelf that they think well we better have something so let's just do this to answer to sort of um meld this with a question from emily burks about can a performance management software ever help me train managers to get better at performance management and sort of bring these two together what I have seen, and it's not that performance management software can ever be a disaster, but sometimes it can be confusing unless it's trained properly and communicated it well. As I, I did once, I was once advising, a, I was implementing performance management software, it wasn't appraised, <laughs> at an insurance company. And I had this fascinating conversation with a middle manager who said, now that, I, now that we have implemented performance management software, I assume I'm no longer at liberty to have performance conversations with my people because I have to do all of that online. I have to have the discussion online <laughs> rather than face to face. And I just, it was really, it was, it was very surprising to me that anyone would really understand that that was what, <laughs> what he was no longer able to do. But I guess he hadn't really understood that it's, it continues to be a human interaction. Performance management, people management is a human thing, but the software is there to track and be a repository of those discussions 
and it doesn't replace the discussion between an, a, a manager and their employee. But it was it was eye opening to me because I just thought, how could you how how could you have thought <laughs> that, that was the point of the software to stop you talking? Yeah. But you know, it can yeah.